So I'm just getting ready for the dyno. Next thing to do is change these spark plugs. I'm triple checking the gap on these. I have the feeler gauge for 0.28. Obviously the first thing I need to do is take off the coil pack covers with 10 millimeter bolts. But anyway, the reason I'm waiting until now to do the spark plugs is because I'm not sure what the base tune is right now and I don't know how rich it is and I didn't want to foul up my brand new spark plug so I was waiting until uh, right before the dyno appointment so um, I finally have the appointment and I'm gonna go down in just a day or two and I'm going to make sure everything's right so I'm just gonna unplug all these uh, ignition coils and pull the plugs out and I did retorque these I pulled all these plugs out when I bought the car and I did a compression test to make sure that everything is good on this engine which it was came back just fine um, but anyway I'm going to pull out all these ignition coils and I'm going to um, change the spark plugs so pulling them out um, I actually need to go get another magnet so I just use the ignition coil to reach in there and pull the plug out so I don't know how well you'll be able to see this but that's the plug that came out of the car looks really good it's a nice color, it's not lean, it's not melting at all. Um, the ground straps are all there. Some people pull these plugs out and they're just melted and destroyed. So um, so here I'm going to put a little bit of anti-seize on here. Um, but this is the new plug and these are the TR6 NGK uh, plugs and I think they're the NGKR. 4177 is the part number. And I, I bought these for all my supercharged Mustangs. But that's the one that a lot of people go with. They're a little bit colder range plug. Now what I like to do is I just take the plug and I hold it halfway down the spark plug hole with my finger and slightly let it drop in. And this is also because I don't have the rubber piece in my spark plug socket that holds the plug. But I like doing that too and I can center the plug with the deep socket and just the extension and get it started really nice and straight. And so this works out nicely. Now, um, some people over tighten their spark plugs and they'll crack the porcelain so be careful of that. I actually did that on my V6 Mustang back in high school. I, I didn't try to but I did put them in a little too tight and I cracked the porcelain and I got a misfire from that. So what I do here is I, I put it all in snug and um, I go back and I will torque all of these. So I got my torque wrench set up and um, it's actually on half drive with a reducer, so you do lose a little torque there, but I have the wrench set at 18. Um, some people will just put them in as, you know, really, really tight. Some people don't even torque them in, but I think 15 to 20, I believe, is what the torque spec should be, so I just do 18. And if you noticed, I only torqued the first one in once, so let's go back and do it again for good measure. Now the passenger side is a little more tricky. You have to take the band off and get the intake off. And what I do like about this intake is it's silicone, so it bends easy. It is difficult to get on. It has a really good seal, so taking it on and off is difficult. Um, but I do like that it's one piece. Uh, you don't have to take it off in a bunch of different areas. And it has the uh, there's the mass airflow sensor that I haven't ever clicked all the way on yet because. I wanted to wait till I did this and then I have the uh, intake air temperature sensor there. But yeah, I like how that all comes out as one piece. It's not a difficult thing to do. It is difficult to get on because the seal, like I said, and I put a little oil around the rim to slide it back on, but it's really not that bad. So um, I was looking in the spark plug holes and I noticed that there was a little bit of debris in there, so I wanted to suck that all out. Um, even though uh, I'm sure I could have got the plug back down in there, um, I just wanted to clean that out. So I thought I'd show that in the video because that is something that I did. It's a step that I took. And I used a shop vac with a straw on the end of it so I could get way down in there and just suction the straw in the shop vac opening with my hand. So I got the little particles out. I didn't want anything falling down into the engine. Um, I did notice my throttle body was not aligned perfectly. Um, the bolts were all in straight but that throttle body does um, have this ability to move so click there we go. 
I loosened the bolts and I lined it up. I didn't want any restrictions for airflow. Now something I noticed when I've driven the car around the block a few times and done a couple pulls is these intake manifold bolts were vibrating loose just with a little bit of driving. So this is the um, lower intake manifold to cylinder head bolts and the torque on these is only five foot pounds. So I did torque them to five uh, actually, I didn't even torque those because I was so scared of over torquing them because people snap them and strip them so easily. Um, so I had them in nice and snug, but every time I drove the car, they'd come loose. So I decided to take them all out one by one and put Loctite on them. So I would leave them all in at the same time and I would take one out, put Loctite on it, put it back in, snug it down, and then repeat. I've heard of people having boost leaks because uh, these were all snug down wrong and the gaskets weren't lined up right and the air was getting out so that was something I was worried about. I wanted to make sure that for this dyno appointment everything was perfect. Alright so now let's uh, start the car up, make sure that the plug gap is right, make sure that everything is ready to go and we'll see how the car runs with the new plugs gapped down. runs great and uh, I drove around the block. It seems to run just as good as it did before. The gap doesn't seem to affect anything at lower RPM. So I'm going to make sure I have everything for the dyno. I have extra pulley, different sizes. I have brand new ignition coils. I've got a whole bunch of tools. I'm loading up this tool bag with anything that I could possibly need. I have uh, the original alternator to the car in the box right here because I mean, you never know if you'll lose an alternator. This one's a brand new Mechman. Shouldn't have a problem at all. Something very important that I bought and had shipped to my house quickly was this PJ1 track bite. This is what you spray on the, the ground for track prep if you're doing some good street racing. Or the track actually um, sprays it down uh, for the drag strip and it helps the tires hook. I watched some videos where people were slipping on the dyno because it's too cold. And I even saw a red terminator exactly like mine going to the exact same dyno a couple weeks ago and he was slipping on the dyno and they said it was because it was too cold and the tires weren't hooking. So I was like, no way, I've waited three months for this dyno tune appointment and I'm not going to go down there and have the car slip on the dyno. So I bought some of that. It was like $54 for a gallon and I made sure to get some to spray on the tires in case that happens because I'm not going to come back for a retune later. The the air is cold, it's going to be a nice time for the dyno, but I'm not going to have the car have any problems out of my control that I have to come back for a retune for, or not even know what the final numbers are for the car. So I've got all my tools packed up, both toolboxes here, that little red one has pliers and all sorts of things and it, fuses, everything that you might need. I actually have a checklist app on my phone It has over 20 things to take with me to make sure that if anything happens on the dyno I can try to fix it real quick. I've lost an ignition coil before on the bullet and so we had to stop tuning at that point because it was having a misfire and I just don't want to have that happen. In that case I did have ignition coils on hand but um, it happened to be the connector wasn't cl um, clicking on all the way underneath the intake. It was really hard to get to. But the problem is every time you go back to the dyno he charges a few hundred dollars just to strap it down again and retune. So I'm not going to do that plus wait months for another appointment. Now I bought all brand new ignition coils for this car and those were um, 
Ford GT500 ones from late model restoration. The part number is the same for the Terminator. And I also saw a guy selling brand new sets of Ford OEM ignition coils, zero miles, never used, that he was getting in crate engines and they had this crazy other ignition system set up on them. So he was taking all those brand new ignition coils and selling them in packs of eight for like 150 bucks, which is a great deal. So I bought a whole nother set from him because I have three four valve cars that use those. And so I just wanted to have those on hand. So I have all that ready. But I'm trying to cross every T and dot every I on this. I want the car to be totally ready for the dyno. That's why I bought the aftermarket alternator for this car, the fuel pumps, the fuel system. I wanted everything to be perfect for this. I've been over the car a bunch. Obviously, I've been waiting for months for this dyno tune appointment. And he even canceled on me and sent it out another week later. So I've been really anxious, but I want to make sure that everything on my end is perfect. And so... I've just been going kind of crazy waiting. Now I'm kind of worrying, making sure everything was done right, make sure my vacuum lines were all set up so the boost reference ones that handle the fuel pressure are all set up right so the car doesn't start to lean out on the dyno. There's a lot of things to worry about and I'm pretty sure I've done everything perfect as far as I can see. The base tune on the car is actually really nice. It starts up perfect. It drives nice. I did a couple pulls with the car. The air fuel's really nice on it. Um, I wasn't crazy. I didn't take it all the way to red line. I just want to make sure it's running right. But the ignition timing's down at 14 degrees. All he really needs to do is change the timing, you know, play with the fuel a little, and it should be a really easy tune. But I'm just like looking down south towards Vegas and knowing that I'm headed out that way, and it's a bright sunny day, and I'm just hoping that everything's going to go well. And I'm just getting nervous. I'm cleaning the house extra. I'm sweeping the floor and doing the dishes, trying to stay busy. I washed all three of the Mustangs um, because I'm just so excited and nervous for this Dino Tune appointment. My wife can hardly stand me right now. She's just like, you're going crazy. Chill out. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to record the trip down there, the Dino. I'm going to try to include as much footage as I can to make this a really fun experience. I'm trying to be totally prepared for this. I keep going out to the car and looking at it, but there's nothing left to do on it. So I think we're ready. So stay tuned for the dyno video, and uh, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it.